gotta tell me this stuff. <laughs> Good Lord, you gotta tell me when that camera's rolling. You never know when I'm off the farm or something. <laughs> you know how us old men are about breaking out. <laughs> Alright, folks. Now that we're already off to a bad start, let's keep on going. Okay? I'm just gonna let you know what we're doing, what we're up to on the homestead. You enjoying a beautiful Sunday afternoon? About 70 degrees. Something like that. Weather says it's supposed to get up mid 80s, but I don't think it's gonna get that warm today. It is just beautiful, beautiful fall like weather. Raven, would you go on and shut up? Yeah, you too. Anyway, uh, hanging some cages. If you've been following my blog on uh, hillbillyhomesteading.com, I noticed that I, I, I posted yesterday about how we've sold some rabbits, but we've bought some rabbits. So we pretty much, even though we've gotten rid of some rabbits, what with the ones that we've bought and uh, having Twix's litter to wean, we're still kind of short. Not necessarily short on cages, but short on the size of cages that we need, okay? Because these are some cages that I've just been working on. In fact, I've just finished. There's another one right over there we'll show you in just a second. Uh, anyway, I've got it hung up on the wall of this building. It's underneath the awning here. Uh, should be protected from the weather if need be. If need be, I will, I will protect these with a piece of plastic right here on the north side uh, as winter moves in, you know, and it gets colder to keep a little of that north wind off of them. And I'll probably put the nesting box on this side so that that plastic will be right up there. And I'll probably drape it around the corner, kind of like a, I don't remember what video it was, but I was telling you about, uh, I had a cage and Eve was in it and I hung up a, and I hung up some plastic around the corner. Anyway, I just, uh, we might do that and put the cage nesting box, you know, I like the ones in the floor, we'll put them right here and then drape that plastic around. That's going to serve two purposes. One, if there was any blowing precipitation, it doesn't usually come from the north, it'll come from the south, but we can also make a drape over here that we can drop down if needed for when there's young kits in the nest box. So we're hanging this up here. Turn it down under somewhere. Somebody made a comment once upon a time about my geese and how quiet they are. I take back everything I said in that comment. Thanksgiving's looking real good. Anyway, these, this is a bigger cage. I remember a while back I bought, I told you I bought some 36 inch by 30 inch cages. Well, here's the problem I had, okay? When they get back in the back corner like that, I couldn't reach back there. And sometimes some of our skittish doves and what have you that need to come out and go with a buck, they'll have to, you know they'll kind of move up in the corner because some of them are kind of hand shy. We don't some of them, you know some of them we handle more than others. We try to handle them all, but uh, some of them we just don't handle enough to keep them from being skittish like they are. And uh, anyway, I need to be able if they run up in the corner, I need to be able to grab them. And as you can see, these no problem. I can reach everywhere inside there. I've even lowered these down some. Uh, her mom. I, me I measured uh, my wife Dana. I measured her shoulder height, and I wanted her to be able to reach in. See, I'm a little tall for this cage. This could have been higher. This could have been up here for me. But I put it down here because Dana works these a lot, and I need it to be. I need her to be able to handle that reach in and reach to the back just like I do comfortably. So what we've done is the 30 inch cages. You know, they were 30 inches from back to front. <laughs> Problem is, we couldn't do that. So what we've done is. I do love the bigger cages. The New Zealands need the bigger cages. Uh, for the Mini Rex and the Netherland Dwarf, that's the only other that's the only others we have left. We have Netherland Dwarfs and Mini Rex left. Even even with a doe that has a litter, uh, the 24 by 24s are fine. That is well within what Arba recommend for the you know guidelines on cage size for rabbits of those si uh, of that size. So these are going to be for New Zealand. You know we put up a couple around on the side of this building. You saw, you saw the video sometime back of that. Now we need more. And you know, it's not a matter of not having enough cages. I think what I've counted, with what I've counted, I think I've got just enough. Because the two, the two by two cages, even though I prefer to give them a bigger cage, my New Zealand bucks 
since they're going to be alone and they're not ever going to have a litter in there with them like the does they can actually use a 24 by 24 cage i'd rather give them a bigger cage but if i have to i will house a buck in a 24 by 24 cage just to make sure that all my does with litters have a nice large cage because you know the size of new zealand rabbits they need bigger size because them babies you know mustang sally she just had and lost uh yeah, she lost the litter. She had eight of them. When we first saw and realized that she had kindled, she still had six alive. And the next morning, three were dead. By that afternoon, there was only one left. The next morning, it was gone. And what I'm thinking, I'm thinking for some reason, for some reason Sally's milk didn't come in adequately enough. Second one in that building this morning, even though there's not supposed to be a single chicken in there. This is not supposed to be the pigeon building there. Uh. Well, come on out, noisy. Yeah, go on, we hear you. Get. Didn't even touch her checks like I killed her. Anyway, uh. Apologize. Hey, it's a farm, a homestead, whatever you want to call it. It's hard to make film out here without <laughs> all the noise. Okay, now, what was I saying? Okay, yeah, anyway, these are 36 inches wide. Still a good three feet wide. But I had to cut them down a little bit. Instead of 30 deep from front to back, they're 24. So they're three feet. That's a total of six, six square feet. That's what Arba says. That's the minimum recommendation for Arba for a rabbit of New Zealand size with litters. You know, a doe with litter. We're within what we feel is minimum. I would love to have given them the cage, you know, the, the 36 by 30, but I can't, we just can't reach them. So we're going to do this. I think this will work. I know a lot of people that use this size, and it seems like their, their does are perfectly happy in them. So these are definitely bigger than what we've had New Zealand's in so far. You know, we've got Rosie and Mustang Sally. She, they are in a 36 by 30 cage, one of the two previously that I had hung on the side of the building. But here's the deal: we've got Sangria. She's been in a, in a, in a 24 by 24 cage, but she was growing out. She wasn't. She she wasn't even close to being ready to have babies or anything. So a single rabbit of New Zealand size can live in a 24 by 24. You need the bigger size when you're gonna have a doe in there with a nest box and she's gonna have a litter of six or eight. Just like I was saying before, remember how big a New Zealand rabbit gets by the time it's eight weeks old, okay? You need room in here. In fact, what I do is when that, by the time they're six weeks old, I start winning the biggest ones off. I win them off gradually because, uh, well, let's just say I've seen mastitis ruin some really nice brood does it'll actually ruin, uh, you know, ruin their mammary glands and everything, and they get to where they can't properly uh, feed their babies. So I'm not, I don't take that chance. I, I wean them off gradually. And so by the time they're six weeks old, the bigger six or eight in the litter or whatever, by the time they get six or eight, six weeks old, I start weaning the biggest ones off. Probably a couple or three at a time, just depending on how many there are. I don't want to take too many off at once, but the remaining ones are smaller and they'll get more milk because there's going to be every how many you take away you know naturally they're not feeding off the dough the dough's going to produce at first the same amount of milk so each kit that's left with the mama is going to get more milk per day along with whatever pellets and hay they eat that day so they're going to plump up and they're going to catch up with their bigger siblings by doing it that way so uh if you're not already doing that in your system you might want to consider doing something like that in the future see if that works for you just kind of just kind of start, say if you want to start weaning them at six weeks old, I don't recommend weaning them any younger than that unless it's just an outrageously, like if you've got a litter of 12 or 13 or something, you know, maybe start four or five weeks old. You know, if you've got some that are eating really well and that have put on some good weight. But what you're going to find out is, is when you've got a litter of, you know, 12, 13, the kits individually are going to be, you know, the kits over, the, over that litter are going to be smaller average size over the whole litter than say 
if you've got a doe that's milking, she's only feeding, say, six or seven, maybe eight, you know, naturally. So, so you got to take that into consideration. Sometimes if you have a doe that, that kindles seven or eight, and you've got another doe that kindles 11, or, you know, you might even go one farther. You might have a doe that only kindles four. Well, if she's a good, healthy doe, she's got eight places at the table, if you know what I mean. So she can take care of eight comfortably, and she doesn't have to... You know, you don't have to worry about any getting pushed back and being and being not fed properly. So if you've got a, a doe that has a litter of four and you've got another doe that has, say, a litter of 9, 10, 11, even 12, take some of those. Let the other doe take care of them. It makes it, 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 evens, it evens up the workload <laughs> and it's, it's easier. The doe that has a smaller litter, it's not that much more work for her because she's still going to be in maximum milk mode for, for, a, few, for a few weeks anyway. And... It just means that if you don't add more kits on her, her kits are going to be, you know, they're going to be huge by the time they're weaning age. And you're probably going to wean them young, any, you know, younger anyway. And what happens is if you, wean a, if you wean a baby rabbit younger, you're just going to end up feeding them more. You know, mama's milk is, you know, they'll grow faster as long as they're still getting that. They'll grow a lot faster than they will if they're just getting uh, pellets. And, it, and it's cheaper, it's more cheaply produced. Well, not necessarily cheaper produced, but the dough's going to produce it anyway. So you may as well take full advantage of it and leave the kit. And uh, not to mention, if you're if you're raising show, if you if you're raising meat rabbits, they're going to be butcher weight earlier at a younger age. If you're raising show rabbits, you're going to have rabbits that are making minimum weight for show. Minimum weight for New Zealand is six weeks. Okay, uh, sangria had hit that by 14 weeks of age. Okay, now on the other hand, Gabe, he's growing a little bit slower. He was only about five pounds at 14 weeks of age. So, you know, it, 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 it makes a difference. It's not always a bad line. It's not always bad genetics. It could be Gabe came from a larger or a smaller litter. But uh, we've got these, we've got these edge protectors here. And uh, I don't know about you folks, but I get tired of getting poked and scratch and everything else. A lot of this, sometimes it's from unruly rabbits. That right there, that's from breaking against the, even though I try to smooth those off around the edges here, the wire and around the door, you go to pull those back and a lot of times you get a good scratch. And it, and it smarts and stings for a day or two. But we, when we were at the rabbit show the other day, there was the, the vendor there, they had some of these and they were $1.38 a piece for a five foot long section. So I bought about 10 of them, uh, needed more than that, but you know, hey, that's a start. And I really like these, that stay, that really, it's a nice grip on it, stays on. And see, I can go scratch. Uh, I didn't put a piece on that side of the door. This, the door's got a piece here on the bottom. That was mainly where I was concerned, but what I've discovered is this. I'm gonna make a hook that's gonna hook these doors up to the top of that cage so that this is gonna be hands-free. So when I reach in here to get my rabbit, that, that, cat, that door is not going to be resting on my arm. But the worst part was on the bottom of the door anyway. So if, 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 you, if you do yours like me, you'll probably find out that for the, for the edge protector, you probably only need it on the bottom of the door. But I don't think I will need it on any part of the door as soon as I get those hooks put up there that I can hook this door up so that it'll stay up. And then I can reach in with both hands. I've made the openings a little bit bigger. That these are these the openings are square foot. The doors are 14 inches square, so they hang over just about an inch on either side. Actually, it hangs over a little more on this side. But see, uh, actually, I take that back. This is a the door is 14 by 13. I found out that when I put 14 on here, it, it wedged against the bottom and up here in this corner, and I couldn't pull it all the way shut without bending it a little bit, and I didn't like that, so I cut another inch off. But see, it overlaps here at the bottom. It's no problem whatsoever. So, you know, just naturally, you're just using the J-clips. I showed you the J-clips before, but we cut out the door. Where, where you can use the J-clips, just like right here, you know, to hold the wire together, you're also using the J-clips. You're also using the J-clips as a hinge. See, that connects both. And they just, see, they just, work back and forth it's just like a door hinge you know and just the most 
just the best way there is that I'm aware of to attach an all wire, you know, a door to an all wire cage like that. I'm going to get something set up for, I've got some metal banding that came off of a pallet. And, and I'm going to see if I think that banding is heavy gauge enough. And if it is, I'm going to take and bend some of it and make some of the little hooks that rotate and catch down here. Uh, if not, I'll, I don't know, I'll, I'll build something else. I like, I like the little snaps, spring-loaded snaps. I, I don't know exactly what they're called, the, the technical name for those type of snaps. But, uh, the bigger ones we call them bull snaps, but these are, you know, just smaller like teeth. Like, like you would put your uh, key ring on or something. Uh, this right here, this one right here, this would work. Well, I say it would work. Yeah, I guess it would do that, see? A little snap like that. I mean, if, if a predator gets up on this cage and it's determined enough to push that door in, they're gonna do it anyway. You're not gonna, you know. But these things can be rather pricey, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got, you know, 20 or 30 cages to buy them for. You know, naturally you wouldn't have your keys or nothing hanging on there, but that's one thing you can use for a snap. Oh, you mean the little snaps for these over here? Oh. But uh, yeah, those over the, yeah those are over there are a little bit different. But they 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 work. But like I said, they you know, two three dollars a piece don't sound like a whole lot of money, you know. But when you've got twenty or thirty cages that need snaps. Okay, you can tie up a hundred dollar bill in, 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 in latches real quick. And so sometimes, sometimes what we do is we just simply uh, take a piece of bait on water. It, it kind of, it, it's kind of aggravating having to undo it every time when it's time to feed water. But bait on water is always a temporary measure. If we put it in there, twist it up, it'll hold that cage shut. It works just as good as anything else. It's just a little bit annoying to have to untwist it every time and pull that, to pull that cage open. But what can we say? I have also heard of people taking and putting a little S hook, like right here, on this on the door, and pinching the the back side of the S hook shut around that one of those pieces of wire, the, the upright, and then pulling it in and making it to where it'll just hook, and then the natural tension on the wire, see that makes it stay open a little bit, will just kind of hold it in place. But <clears throat> I'm just not real sure. I'm, oh, excuse me. I'm not real sure I am thrilled with that idea. We'll work something out. We're gonna get some rabbits in here. We're gonna move uh, probably Sangria and probably Zoe are gonna be are gonna be, are gonna be moving into these two cages. Uh, next, I've gotta I've gotta make some of the drop down nest boxes. I've got one more cage like this one. I've gotta cut some of this half inch by one inch uh, bottom wire for the bottom out and put the bottom on it and then make a door for it to finish it up and it's gonna go. Right over here, Austin, you can follow me over here for a second with the camera. And here's the cage. Now, this wasn't ideal, but we're making making it work, okay? I'll eventually put something right up here because what, it, and, and it may not even be necessary because there's an overhang out to, clear out to here of the uh, metal roofing tin on the building. But the problem is I've got this cage sticking out past the corner. Can you see that in the camera? How it's past it, past Sort the of, kind of. Well, the problem for that is I need six feet. Well, from the corner right here of this building to right here by the doorway, this corner on the door is exactly six feet. Well, here's my problem. I thought, you know, okay, if I put another cage up here and it's right up to this doorway, how many times we're gonna be tearing off elbows, tearing, scratching up and tearing holes in our elbows and stuff and arms and shoulders and everything else when we walk by this to go into this building. You know, see this one right here sets back. So it's not a problem. But this one, so that's why I screwed it that, that over. Did you get that on camera too? <laughs> you got bugs out here attacking everybody. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I didn't get a. I don't know. It was huge and it flew that way. I didn't get a look at it, but it felt big when it hit me on the arm. I thought I'd done been stung. It's probably a big old horse fly, and I'm just a big old wuss. Anyway, uh. Having another three foot cage here, what, so what I did, the way that's gonna work, okay, three foot cage there, here's another one. And so here's where 36 inches is gonna come to on the next cage, because I'm gonna butt them right up, right, right up against each other. Uh, I really wanted to leave some space in between, I just don't have it. See here, 
but I've got this much. The wall of the next cage is going to be right here. It gives me a little bit from the doorway. It gives us a little bit of elbow room so we don't tear holes and go in the house every day with bleeding elbows and all that kind of stuff, you know. You know, uh, as people, some people like to point out in my comments, you know, we're mostly fat people living around here, so especially Austin and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I only said that because he was sitting there for, he's sitting there being my cameraman anyway uh, that's what we got going on you see we got the stickers here too unfortunately the five foot stick I've got a foot here a foot here a foot here and a foot here you got to cut one piece off of a, another stick to make but like I said I don't think I'm gonna need these pieces anyway so I may take them off and just use them on the next excuse me on the next cage door but uh this is what we got going on. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be making some drop down nest boxes for these because ideally, if I have to, ideally, eventually, all these big cages we're going to have full of does, does raising litters. Okay, that's the plan. So I want the drop down nest boxes on here. That being said, I'm also going to need. Uh, oh, if if you are interested. I've made a video before about making a drop down this box, but if I remember right, that, that video wasn't very, because it was in the building, and there's cramped conditions in there, and it was dark. I don't think that turned out very good, the part where I showed how to put that on and what have you. So if you would like to see when I install one of those onto this cage, if you would like for me to film that process hit again that like and show that on a video, hit the like button, uh, hit the like button, and Drop me a comment, let me know. Say, hey, yeah, I want to watch that. Because if I don't get some likes and some comments, I'm not going to bother filming it. I mean, because I've already done it before, it's just, it would just be redundant. But, like I said, that wasn't the best video for that. Out here, it's a little bit more open. There's better light. Provided we're out here at the right time of day. And there's a little more room for me to move around and show you what I'm doing. So, if you'd like to see that, like I said, let me know. Let me know, otherwise I ain't going to do it. Oh, I think I've just rambled on and on and on and I said a, hardly a thing. Like Austin says, I talk all the time and don't ever say nothing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I guess, I guess I pretty much said all I had to say and probably then some. And I'd like to thank y'all for watching. Remember, we've got that blog now on Hillbilly. It's at hillbillyhomesteading.com. We're also going to be posting some articles about, about rabbits and what have you and taking care of... Uh, them and taking care of other animals, breeding rabbits, breeding rabbits, housing rabbits, a little bit about grooming, although most of the rabbits that we have don't really require a whole lot of grooming. The New Zealand, we do use a slicker brush on them a little bit when their hair is coming loose, you know, when they're getting ready to blow a coat. It helps, it helps it come out, but I found out there's, there's better ways of doing that, so I probably won't be using the slicker brush much more. And we don't have any rabbits that have yeah, registrally long hair, so. No, we don't have any lion heads, don't have any Jersey woolies, don't have any angoras, nothing like that. So help us out. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. You can hit you can subscribe to our channel. Hey, we've got a Facebook page by the same name. Hillbilly Half Acre Homestead on Facebook. And go to that page and like it. A lot of times there and on our blog on our website, we will be po posting more updates in more real time when we don't have time to get out the camera and, and, and make a video and show you an update a lot of times we will give you text updates through uh, the blog and the Facebook fan page so uh, so y'all like that so you'll be able to receive notifications from that stuff and what have you that'll keep you more up to date with what's going on I mean there's a lot of stuff going on you know people that are subscribed or that have liked that fan page they've known for a couple of days that we lost Mustang Sally's litter uh, the rest of you just found that out today